Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Hello, thank you for watching my videos. It's Mike. It's March 16th, 2009. Um, <clears throat> I had a couple of questions about um, Reinhardt and my discussion with him and everything, and I'm not talking about it, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I respect the fact that he actually asked me to call him, so I'm not going to push it. Um, he knows how to get me, and if he wants to give me any information, he knows how to do it, so that's fine. That's cool. Um, he does, you know, he does have a life, and he's um, kind of busy right now. He's got lots of things to figure out. <laughs> uh, I don't envy him that job. Um, I certainly don't envy him the job of finding all those goofy pictures. <laughs> then again, it's not that tough, is it? <laughs> Google Images is a wonderful thing. Okay, so, <clears throat> funny story of the day. Here's my take on some things that have been happening. Right, vampire unearthed in, <laughs> in Venice, plague grave. Um, some archaeologists were digging up a grave site and stumbled across a skeleton <clears throat> who has had a brick shoved in her mouth. <laughs> it's an interesting story. Uh, basically, at a certain part of the, the plague, um, <clears throat> people were convinced that... Um, they were vampires that were they were feeding out bad stuff so people would die and then they would have their souls and they would eat them. Um, so in order to correct this mistake, uh, this problem, they'd shove a brick in their mouth so they couldn't eat anything. <laughs> it's a funny story. <laughs> okay. Right, what's been happening? <clears throat> well, Ben, ben Bernanke came out on the weekend and said, Oh yes, I see a U.S. recovery from 2010. Unless things don't work out, in which case we're it's going to be longer. <laughs> but the headline is we're going to see it 2010, yay! Unless things don't work out. Guess what? They're not working out. Um, well, they're working out the way that some people want it to work out, but not the way that most people would. Treasury International Capital data for January was released this morning. So this is the tick report that um, Oz was pointing at us at yesterday. He added some more stuff on there, uh, uh, on that blog site, about uh, the calculation for the W. Um, <clears throat> and basically saying that he thinks he thinks that it's going to go up to around 7,500, 8,000 on the Dow. And then from there, it's just going to go bang again. Um, and then we're going to head down much lower, and who knows what's going to happen after that. And personally, I'm with option number four. Um, but that's me, I'm a pessimist. That's not true. I'm actually an optimist. I just look at this thing and think, no, this is looking far too similar to 1932 now. Um, okay, so the Treasury report uh, came out. They basically came out and said, um, net purchases of long-term treasuries were minus 18 billion. Okay. Uh, foreign equi net foreign acquisition of long-term securities estimated to have been minus 60 billion. Uh, banks own net dollar denominated liabilities to foreign residents decreased 119 billion uh, <clears throat> monthly net tick flows were negative 148 billion okay uh, of this net <laughs> foreign private flows were minus 158 billion so more money went out 158 billion to foreigners it was taken out uh, and uh, an additional 10 billion was pumped in from the U.S. economy. So there's your treasury bubble. Um, this is not going to be nice when this goes bang either. Hmm. Okay, other news today. <clears throat> AIG, of course, the headlines here were, you know, AIG faces growing wrath over payouts. People are upset about the payouts, these, these bonuses. That's a mirage. <clears throat> What's underneath is quite interesting. AIG publishes counterparty list. This is the list of the banks that got money from AIG to settle up when AIG was going bang. Uh, and then the government came along and bailed them out and gave them a bunch of money. Um, well, <clears throat> who got the money? So, the government gave the money to AIG and then AIG gave the money to their liabilities. Basically trying to clean this mess up they've made. Um, so, uh, AIG paid out 22 billion of collateral related to credit default swaps. Only 22 billion. Mm. <laughs> 27 billion to help cancel swaps. Okay, so basically, <clears throat> and another 43 billion to satisfy the obligations of its security lending operation. Now, 
And so that's a mess. And I've linked articles, I've also linked the actual um, <coughs> a memo from AIG. You can go see what AIG actually says. <coughs> and if you look at it closely on the attachments, you can see where this money is going. Uh, Society, Society, Society General, Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, Barclays, UBS, well, this goes on and on, uh, Rabobank, <laughs> JP Morgan, Banco Santander, <coughs> hmm. uh, Bank of America, oh good, some Canadians got some money, Bank of Montreal, excellent, <laughs> 200 million for them, yay, and Royal Bank of Scotland. Now, <clears throat> this news that Barclays basically received, okay, here they're saying 0.9 billion, other lists of other stuff they gave out, um, basically points to Barclays getting somewhere in the order of 8.5 billion, 8 to 8.5 eight billion from AIG, this AIG bailout. So over here, the Barclays stock just went through the roof. It's like, yes, see, we got plenty of capitalization. Mm. Well, we might need to actually go and stick some of our assets into the bad bank, but aside from that, I linked here uh, AIG um, PowerPoint presentation <clears throat> on systemic risk. How big is the sy systemic risk in insurance? So this was basically AIG trying to justify to people why they need a bailout. Okay, basically they're saying you know they are too big to fail. It's true. Um, if AIG goes down, that's it. Poof, game over. Start a new party. Um, however, which is kind of likely, but never mind. However. AIG, Impact on Global Capital Markets, page 17 of the presentation. Now, you see, the making a big, long presentation is really, really boring, and most people will go, nah, okay, forget it, well, I'm not reading this. <clears throat> That's what most people will do. Unless someone highlights this to you, you would not have known this. <clears throat> An AIG failure could have similar or worse consequences on the global financial market as that of the Lehman bankruptcy. Similarities include the large size of their derivatives book. <clears throat> AIG Financial Products Corporation has approximately $1.6 trillion in notational derivatives exposure. Okay. <laughs> $1.6 trillion. With a T, guys. Remember? A million million. Big. <laughs> Unwinding of the portfolio in an AIG failure would likely cause enormous downward pressure on valuations across a wide range of assorted asset classes. Total client base, more than 1,500 mortgage cor corporations, governments, and institutional investors would be affected. It would take out most of civilization if that went. Um, linked an article here from Portfolio.com speaking about this not-so-transparent list of counterparties. Yep, <laughs> don't, don't want to go into that. Uh, I've got another article linked, Bright Students Shun Finance for Careers in the Classroom. So the brighter students don't want to go and work in the city, they would like to do something a little more um, hmm, a friendly or uh, <laughs> something that will actually help the society recover from this um, impending collapse. <clears throat> uh, so your bankers out there who were, you know, I told you you can go get a teacher's job, well you're going to have to fight with the, the younger ones. Linked here, Lockheed Martin to build high-altitude airship for homeland security. Okay. <laughs> we got Big Brother again. So they don't need to have cameras on every street corner. They'll just have them flying in space. Watching everything that you do. Now, front page of the Daily Telegraph today. <clears throat> Big letters. Britain shows signs of heading towards 1930s-style slump. They use the slump word on the printed edition. The web edition, they've got the D word. <clears throat> Britain is showing signs of sliding towards a 1930s-style depression, the Bank of England says today, for the first time. The country is displaying early symptoms of being trapped in a so-called debt deflation trap. There's that deflation thing. <clears throat> yeah, if you believe that. Um, and basically the report says, <clears throat> the configuration of falling asset prices and depressed economic conditions in the face of an adverse demand shock is consistent with recent and prospective macroeconomic developments. In other words, they're pretty sure it's going to happen. Uh, unless they do something really big. Sort it out. What can they do that's really big? Now, of course, 
over in the States, Bernanke, as I said, sees recovery from 2010, unless something goes wrong. <clears throat> the IMF came out today in the Telegraph. IMF poised to print billions of dollars in global quantitative easing. Now the IMF is kicking out the printing presses. Um, and the article here goes on to explain that, <clears throat> you know, this is interesting. They're going to be creating new special drawing rights, um, basically out of thin air. Economics, econ economists warned the scheme could cause a major swell of inflation around the world. <clears throat> so this idea is up for discussion uh, <laughs> at the next meeting of the G20 finance ministers, leading up to the end of the month. Okay. Of course, yesterday I was talking about oil. Someone sent me along a very interesting um, uh, pair of documentaries on oil prices and the spike in oil prices and who's behind it. It's very interesting. And I've included a link to an article that explains <clears throat> a link between uh, trans -montan -monting I don't know how to pronounce that one. I'm not even going to bother. Um, the partnership, shall we say. <clears throat> and, um, yeah. <laughs> Morgan Stanley Capital Group. Okay, folks, and finally, last but not least, got a couple of funny videos at the end. Um, well, actually, no, there's one funny one, which is <laughs> REM and the Muppets, furry happy monsters, and some not so funny ones. Uh, there's a couple of presentations, documentary on what's happening in Zimbabwe right now. Yep, uh, and what's happening in China in the manufacturing sector. Okay, folks. Peace, love, understanding, think about things, and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Bye.